Hi, I'm Jan Willis from the eBeam Initiative. Welcome to this edition of the Fine Line Video Journal. I'm really lucky today to have a lithography luminary with me, Dr. Harry Levinson. Welcome, Harry. Thank you. Harry has had a long and distinguished career in corporate life and has recently started out on his own business. And observing him at the most recent SPIE conference, I can tell you he's definitely not retired. So Harry, what's keeping you so busy? Well, I am consulting in lithography. I have uh, more than one client uh, currently, and I've gone back to teaching uh, short courses in lithography science and lithography process control. Great. Well, and we really appreciated that Harry delivered one of our invited talks at the annual eBeam Inici e Initiative lunch at SPIE, where he talked about the need for speed due to the increased computation time in EUV. So let's start there, and maybe you can summarize some of the reasons for this increase in computation time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, there, there are three things that come to mind. Uh, first is the fact that the physics of uh, imaging with EUV lithography is just fundamentally more complex than that uh, we uh, have in optical lithography. And then there are a couple consequences of scaling. Uh, one is that we just have a lot more features on the mask than we ever had before, uh, necessitating more computation power. And the other is the fact that because the features are much smaller, we need much greater accuracy, and hence the computations need to be more exact. So those are the things, I think, driving the need for speed. Okay. And what about solutions? Well, the, I think we've got a, a few things uh, that are now uh, coming available that are, are very important. Uh, in particular, uh, graphics processors, GPUs, that uh, allow uh, parallel computations to be performed. And uh, they, um, the nice thing about optical lithography is that it's quite amenable to parallel computation. So it's a very uh, propitious time. The other uh, thing we need, of course, are innovative algorithms that allow us to exploit the new hardware. Okay. Another thing that Harry talked about was that curvilinear is the future. And that brings up another computation issue and question, and that is around ILT, one of the techniques to deliver curvilinear data. How do you see ILT evolving? Well, ILT um, has been a concept around a decade or more, and it's a very powerful technique allowing lithographers to optimize the uh, imaging solution. Uh, one of the problems, though, it, it does take a long time to do the calculations, and hence has been applied uh, to very small areas. So it's been uh, done to optimize memory cells where uh, you can really leverage that optimization. And it's also been applied to very select standard cells and logic, uh, but uh, really has not yet to date uh, been, uh, we haven't had the powerful tech, uh, computational capabilities to do what we'd really like to do ideally, which is apply it to uh, full chips. Okay, great. You can find Harry's talk on the eBeam Initiative's website at ebeam.org. One more question now about EUV. Um, in Harry's talk, he gave some examples of how the industry has been adamant, part of the industry has been adamant about EUV for many years, starting at 45 nanometer even. And then as recent as a few years ago, the eBeam Initiative survey showed that there were equally people adamant that it would never happen. But now that we're in the era of EUV, I just wanted to see what are your perspectives on lessons learned? Well, I think the, the, the real key is uh, when you ever have technologists that, that don't come to agreement, I, I think it usually says uh, fundamentally there just aren't enough facts available for everybody to look at it and arrive at the same logical conclusion. And, and with any advanced technology that is not fully developed, there are going to be some questions about will it work or not, and that's a matter of, uh, you know, people come to different conclusions based on their intuition, and you go one side or another. I think it's very important not just to look at what people's uh, final opinion is, but sort of what their reasoning is that allow them to uh, come to certain conclusions. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch now to another big global trend, artificial intelligence and deep learning. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lessons learned there as well. So I'd like to see what your perspective is on deep learning and how it might um, affect lithography in the future. Well, I think there, there are two areas where we're, we're seeing it being applied. Uh, one is on the data side. Uh, we, we necessarily have to collect large amounts of data really to see what's going on at the, the very tight levels that we're, we're uh, trying to achieve. 
And with all those data, we need something to allow us to see the forest for the trees or to see the needle, find the needle in the haystack. And, and a lot of these uh, techniques allow us to, to accomplish that. The other applications on the uh, computational side where we have this need for speed and, and some of these techniques allow us to do the computations faster and more efficiently. So I think those are the, the areas where the new types of algorithms are going to be applied. Well, and it's proving to be a very exciting and interesting dimension to our industry. So now let me wrap up by um, thanking all the members of the EBIM initiative who contributed to our 10 years of success that we've just celebrated and that we welcomed our 50th member, ASML. Harry's been one of the contributors from the beginning. So final question is, you know, what do you see as the standout moments of the last 10 years in the EBIM community? Well, of course, the beginning is always something that tends to stand out in one's mind. And I remember when uh, I first engaged in the first year with the eBeam initiative, uh, my research group at Global Foundries had an activity where we were exploring the possibility of doing uh, direct write lithography on wafers, uh, which necessarily must uh, involve uh, uh, parallel uh, multiple beam patterning. Um, you go to where we are today, we now see um, in production multi-beam uh, tools, but of course they're used for making masks. So it's kind of the bookends uh, involving multiple beams. That's great. Thank you so much for being with us from the beginning and also for sharing your perspectives here today. Welcome. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on the Fine Line Video Journal.